Let my whole life be expressions of your grace. Dear listener, welcome to Hour of Destiny devotional with Reverend Mike Inula of Habitation of Winners Ministry International. Happy listening. Hello, good morning. Welcome to Hour of Destiny Daily Devotional and Spiritual Breakfast with Reverend Mike Eniola. Welcome to Wednesday, 14th December, year 2022. Beloved, wherever you are this morning, open your mouth and be saying Amen as I bless you today and prophetically pray for you. In the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18, that is where I want to pray for us this morning. I want to pray that you will no longer suffer spiritual blindness. There are a good number of people hearing me this morning. You are well located, you are sighted, you can see clearly on the outside, but you are suffering from blindness of the mind. There are some people that they cannot think aright, they cannot think straight. Everything about them is just confused. Ability to know what to do and when to do it, they don't have it. They depend on other people thinking for them. You need this prayer this morning. Your mind may have been blinded and be corrupted. Apostle Paul prayed in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18, Ephesians 1 18, from better understanding in New Living Translation. New Living Translation says, I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called. For those he called his holy people who are his rich and glorious inheritance. He said, I pray that your heart will be flooded with light so that you can understand. I am praying for somebody this morning whose heart is so darkened that you cannot understand what other people get easily. Your heart is so darkened you cannot get even an examination all. I hear a lot of people say, Reverend Nola, when I study, I read, but I cannot comprehend. I read, I cannot assimilate. I read, I don't understand. And I have major exam ahead of me. This prayer is for you. I command your heart and your mind to be open now. Whatever evil padlocks that the enemy have used to padlock your mind, that you cannot think where you cannot understand what you need to understand. Today, by the authority of God, I command your heart to be open now in Jesus' name. I use the instrument of the blood of Jesus to wash away evil clothes that the enemy have placed on your mind in the spirit realm. I remove them now and I declare your mind open to the glory and praise of the Lord. In Jesus' name, everyone suffering any kind or whatever kind of blindness today, whether physical blindness, spiritual blindness, marital blindness, financial blindness, academic, in any area of life, I command, let your eyes be open today. In Jesus' name, everyone that is having eye problem today, I want you to place your hand on your two eyes as I pray this morning. I see Dr. Jesus, who is the greatest optician is attending to eyes this morning be healed now if it needs god to re- to give you brand new eyes claim it now and begin to see well in jesus name i pray that from heaven your healing takes place now in jesus name every one of us as we go out today in peace we shall all return in peace and the enemy shall not find a way to double cross us today in jesus name you are blessed and you are lifted somebody shout amen i believe as i receive hallelujah beloved today being wednesday i want us to conclude and round up on the teaching of the lost prayers but let me say this it is a very common thing in some denominations and even in some families to recite the lost prayer every day it is okay it is biblical there is no sin about it but to some people it has just become ordinary word to some people it is just rhetoric the power is no longer there you are reciting the lost prayers and you are still living in sin it's not going to work so like i keep saying every day sin is a destroyer of destiny you terminates purpose in life if you want your prayers to be answered then you stay away from sin i had somebody say pastor Enola, is it possible to live without sin yes if jesus is on the inside of you he takes over your life and you start running away from sin so we started reading 
Matthew chapter 6, about the Lord's Prayer from verse 9. He taught us how to pray. He said, you address our Father who art in heaven, not your grandfather who is late, not your grandmother who is in the village. There is no intermediary between God and you. The only name, the only name that is being given to us to request anything from God is through the name of Jesus. If you are asking anything from God using any other name, you are just wasting your time. The only authentic name given and approved by the heavens to make your request known to God is through the name of Jesus. Say, our Father who art in heaven. I told us you must have a relationship with him first before you can address him as your father. If he's not your father, he's not compelled to answer your prayer. Then, say, we art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. You must start your prayer by giving thanks to God. You thank him for what he has done in the past. You thank him for what he's doing at the moment. You thank him for what he will do. I hear some people say, God, thank you for what you have done. Thank you for what you are doing. Thank you for what you have not done. No, 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 no. You say, God, thank you for what you have done. Thank you for what you are doing. Thank you for what you will continue to do. That is how to appreciate him. Then in verse 10, say, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your prayer must be in alignment with the will of God. I said it again. I said it before and I'm repeating it. God will rather change man than to change his standard. God will rather change you than to change his word. No matter how long you spend in prayer, praying that God should change his will, he will not. I told us the story, the story of a man of God who was believing God for a particular sister to marry. And God said, no, she's not my will for you to marry. She's my daughter. She's heaven bound. But both of you are not meant together as husband and wife. And the man of God stopped. So you cannot use prayer. If you are waiting to use prayer to change the will of God, you are just wasting your time. Your prayer must be God. Your will be done in my life. This thing that I'm asking for, if it is not your will, God, I drop it. Then the next verse is say, give us this day our daily bread. Be specific in your prayer. Go straight to the point. You are looking for admission? Don't blame God. Don't subject God to judicial panel and say, God, what is my offense? What have I done? Other people are married, have not married. Other people have gotten their children, have not had one. My colleagues, they have almost graduated from the university. I'm still writing jam. That is just story. Go to God. Be specific. Ask him, God, I am trusting God for admission. I am believing God for a marriage partner. Be specific in your request. Say, give us this day our daily bread. Then verse 12, say, and forgive us our debts as we forgive those who owe us too. That is the bottom line. That is the bone of contention. I said it the other day that if you are not ready to forgive people their sins, then forget about God answering your prayers. You are keeping people in your mind, harboring malice, animosity, grudge in your heart. You see somebody, you attend the same service together, the same church. As soon as they share the grace in church, you follow the other way because you don't want to follow the main door so as to avoid him or her. And then you are praying to God. Be assured that your prayer cannot be answered. Jesus said, if you do not forgive people their offenses, then God will not forgive you your offense. Look at it in verse 14. Now, coming to verse 13, he said, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evils. I said it, and I repeated it again yesterday. It is the devil that brings temptation, but God have the power and the grace to deliver us from all evils. Maybe as you are hearing me this morning, there are several temptations your way. I pray that the Lord will deliver you. As a person, as an individual, as a Christian over many years, God have delivered me and rescued me from so many temptations that would have wrecked so many havoc in my life and ministry. But because I've always been trusting God, Lord, as I go out this morning, please deliver me from whatever temptation or evil that might be on my way. So I pray for you this morning that you also receive the same grace. And then if you look at the last statement of that verse 13, it's also a way of rounding up your prayer with another thanksgiving. Say, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. What more can we say to that? By telling God, say, God, I thank you. You are the king over the kingdom. You are the one who have the power. You are the one who possess the glory forever and ever. So you start your prayer with thanksgiving. You end your prayer with thanksgiving. And let me say this as I round up. I believe in very long time in prayers 
by the grace of God I do. But I want to say, it's not the amount of hours you spent in your prayer closet that will make God to answer you. You can spend 20 hours beating about the bush. If you are not specific, you will not get anything. The children of Israel parabolated, spent 40 years in the wilderness, journey that would have taken them just 40 days. But because of sinful lifestyle, they wasted a lot of manpower, they wasted resources, and at the end of the day, thousands or millions of them could not enter. So I put it to you this morning, stay away from sin if you want God to answer your prayers. I pray all will be well with you. I pray that you will not pray in vain. I pray you receive grace and energy to pray more and to get results. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord increase you. May God prosper you today and forever. In Jesus' name. Amen. Daily as I live, oh, as I breathe, let my whole life be expressions of your grace. Hour of Destiny, presented by Reverend Mike Inula of Habitation of Winners Ministry International. We invite you to worship with us on Sunday by 8.30 a.m. and Wednesday, 5 p.m. Venue, His Glory Cathedral of Habitation of Winners Church after Waiek Office along Cruiser Road, Lokoja, Kogi State, Nigeria. For prayers and counseling, contact us on 806 211 or 803 Seven nine seven four seven four eight. Rose Form produced the program. Thank you for listening, and God bless you. Hey.